Uh, my name's Steven Krause. I've been with Terry Blacks for about a year and a half, and today I'm going to take a deep look inside their pit house. So, come on. All right, so check it out. We got 6,000 gallon offset smokers in here. Each of them is made out of a decommissioned propane tank. These ones in particular are made by Sonny Moberg over at Dripping Springs. He kind of just takes a bunch of old propane tanks out of the landfill and repurposes them into cooking thousands of pounds of food a day. Uh, this piece in front is called the firebox. It's the only source of heat for the entire tank. It carries all that hot air and smoke throughout the entire chamber up that smokestack. And right here, you can see it's kind of got like a cylindrical shape on the inside but also this quarter inch thick steel insulation box on the outside that helps really hold that heat in efficiently so you can burn a very hot fire with minimal wood. And right there you kind of see we're burning post oak wood. It's our choice for Central Texas barbecue because it's kind of sets the, it's like the standard around here. It's very abundant, also gives a nice mild flavor to the meat without being too overpowering. Um, and right now we got about 35 briskets on pit six right now that went on at eight in the morning. So about seven and a half hours in. And I can give you a look at the inside if you like. Kind of give it a little examination of where we're at in the cook. So right here, as you can see, we're reaching around like 25 to 200, uh, 300 degrees Fahrenheit for our firebox, and it's carrying all that hot air over these briskets. You see a light, light sizzle going over the bark right there. Over time, that's going to continue to get a little bit darker, a little more golden on these exposed pieces of deco fat, which means it's caramelizing and should melt in your mouth like butter. Uh, and over time, it'll get a little bit softer like a toasty marshmallow. So we're looking at about like 90 more minutes before we wrap these up in butcher paper, at which point that bar's gonna be nice and set. Uh, we don't want to dry out or char any further, so that, that paper's gonna protect it from um, drying out and retain that moisture. And then after that, they go back on the pit for like 90 minutes to two more hours, and we're gonna pull them off by like tenderness and feel. And then even after that, we'll still be cooking the, the pork rib beef from Turkey and set that up for our overnight guys because we're, we're cooking here 24-7, so the fun never stops. What, uh, what else do we have on the pits? Is it just brisket on the pits right now? Is there anything else on? We actually do have a load of raw sausage right now on pit 5 if you want to come take a look. So this is a bit different of the cook. Where our brisket's 12 hours, uh, our sausage is only 3 hours. So we really cold smoke them all the way through to get that color on the casing. And then by the end, we're going to try to get the internal temperature up to 155 degrees so that way the casing becomes nice and plump and taut. So right here, getting a little bit heavier smoke on there. These are just kicking off the, the start of their journey right now in the first hour. But we're going to get a lot of that thick, white, dense smoke on these to kind of layer onto that casing for us. And this is our jalapeno cheddar right now. Within like the first hour to 90 minutes, you really want to see those casings start to turn from that pale white to that nice uh, like dark deep red over time. And then once you get that color, that's when you kind of kick up the temperatures just to get that internal temperature up. Okay, and then so you, cook, you smoke it for three hours and then what? What do you heat it up later? What's like the finishing process for that? Exactly. So once those get up to that internal temperature of 155 degrees, we will pull these off and store them in our walk-in. And then for service, we'll actually reheat them back up to 165 degrees uh, and put them in the shams. Um, so it's kind of like a, a pre-cooked process and then a cook for service process. So once you get that internal temperature up to the right, you know, um, temperature in the casing gets to the right plumpness, that's when they get that snap on the casing and it'll break nicely. Are all the briskets all kind of like the same stage throughout or do we have them in different stages here on these different pits or what, what do we have here? It's a great question. We actually stagger the cooks throughout the, the morning um, depending on how many guys you have to load them. So, the first pit might be loaded around 7 a.m., whereas the last pit might be loaded around 8.30 or 9 a.m. Um, and then each of those will be slightly different stages. So like pit six might be an hour ahead of pit three or vice versa. Pit four might be a half hour ahead of pit two. Uh, so that gives you kind of time to wrap one up and then get prepared for wrapping the next one or rotate one and prepare for the rotation of the next one. So they won't always all start at the exact same time. Um, and then that'll kind of help um, line up the, the next throw ons for the overnight team when we put on the pork and the beef rib for them. So it's always going to be like an hour apart maybe. I think most of them right now are wrapped up. Let me take a look at one of these pits right now. Uh, let's see. Pit 2 went on at 4 a.m. So it's probably in the last leg of its cook right now. Uh, I think we're coming up almost, uh, we're in the 11th hour. So 11th hour, in the 12th hour actually. Uh, so right now you kind of see these ones will be purely wrapped up in butcher paper. Really getting that sweat there as it continues to render within that paper. And all, all the excess water and fats kind of soak it into these papers. But over time, they're going to get a little bit softer by the touch. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, the lean side is also kind of catching up to the moist side, which is face the fire for the majority of the cook. Um, and then we're going to pull off. When you kind of feel that 
internal structure starting to break down in the paper. Um, it's almost like that center of gravity shifts when all that connective tissue on the inside, called collagen, is starting to turn into gelatin, and it kind of has a little more pliability to it, um, at which point you'll know it's kind of really close to pulling off. You said you're using post -oak. Where do you get the wood from? Uh, so we have a supplier named uh, Javier uh, from Chief Firewood. He has an excellent source of wood. He seasons his wood for about six to 12 months uh, before sending it over to Austin. Out back, I can show you kind of the cages lined up right there. It's about like a week and a half's worth of wood. Um, it's really good. It'll give us a nice variety of like barky wood, really heavy, dense wood that's going to burn, you know, a little bit lower of a temperature and a little slower, but also some like more lighter, porous wood that'll burn a little bit hotter for you, uh, depending on, you know, what you want to uh, use for your cook. So each stage, I'm like, at the start of the cook, we might use like smaller pieces like this, uh, just to get a little bit of a smokier, uh, dirtier uh, fire at the start. And then over time, you might move up to a little bit less sparky pieces, uh, maybe lighter pieces if you want to catch up your temperature faster. Um, and then over time, as you get further in the cook, you might want to pick you know, a heavier, denser piece that's going to help you maintain temperatures for longer without having to adjust your fire as much. That's about like a week and a half's worth of wood right now. Um, and usually like a cage and a half to two cages a day, uh, depending on you know, what part, part of the week you're in. Because um, usually as we build up to the weekend, we're going to ramp up on our usage quite a bit. Uh, we got nine pits cooking, you know, today especially. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe like an entire row and then, the, and then like half of this row we'll probably go throughout uh, the week. And we got actually a few more cages out back by pits uh, seven and eight. So lots to be delivered. Why do you do barbecue personally? Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I think it's one of those things that uh, coming to Texas myself, you know, I really enjoy just the experience of, of eating it and enjoying it and being around family and friends. And I think that's kind of, the drive that makes me want to give that same experience to anyone else new coming into barbecue and also just on the, the technical technical aspect there's always something new to keep learning it's like this endless progression of always honing in on your skill and your craft um it just makes it really uh fun to to go deeper and deeper into i think if you're going to come into this field uh you got to look at it at it as like a passion uh something you love to do um it definitely it's like almost like a privilege to like be able to come to work every day and just know you're going to have a lot of fun uh, making some really badass food and you know, putting smiles on people's faces when they give them a little tour and show them what barbecue is all about. <laughs> they always say what we're doing is magic, but yeah, I mean, there's so many intricacies that go into cooking barbecue that I definitely overlooked when I was coming into this field. You know, it was definitely more complex than I thought it could ever be, but in the best way possible. Um, there's always just some kind of like skill to kind of keep uh, adjusting, critiquing. Um, and there really is something like special though, um, because there's so much like history to it. Uh, you know, it's, it goes even all the way back to the 1800s. You know, they had like pits in the ground. It was originally just like a form of mild food preservation before it even became like a big phenomenon for cooking brisket. Um, and then the, the black family alone, you know, that's going back to the 1930s. And that's just four generations worth of knowledge and, and skill passed down at this point. So it's kind of really neat to see um, how big of an impact it's had on this region, uh, especially in Texas, because you know, before coming to Texas, I, I had really not known so much about um, just real, real barbecue that was done on pits and, and brisket and you know, everything that was so exciting about it. But then you come into it and you're like, oh, wow, this is, this is really neat. <laughs> We're always still trying new things and learning a little bit about you know, how to make the things better. Um, and we all kind of just learn from each other too, which is the best part. Um, We've all kind of figured out things on our own. Um, and like that, that team communication, I think that really helps uh, just build a better experience for all of us here. So, and, and the guests as well.